This lady, later known as the Countess of Athlone, led a life rich in public service and royal engagements that spanned the entire 20th century. Born in 1883 into the British royal family, she was a granddaughter of Queen Victoria and the last surviving grandchild at the time of her death in 1981. Her remarkable journey saw her play important roles in numerous historical events, witnessing the reigns of six British monarchs. She married Prince Alexander of Teck, the second cousin once removed in 1904, and together they had three children. Notably, the couple left significant marks in royal service beyond the UK, with the princess becoming vice reign of South Africa and Canada during her husband's tenure as Governor General in those dominions. In addition to her duties, she demonstrated a particular interest in education and charity work, serving as the first Chancellor of the University of the West Indies and chaired the Council of Royal Holloway College, the University of London. So join me now as we look back on the life of Princess Alice, the Countess of Athlone, a woman of strength and grace. On the chilly morning of February the 25th, 1883, the grand halls of Windsor Castle echoed with the cries of a newborn child. This child was Princess Alice, the only daughter born to the noble union of Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, the youngest son of Queen Victoria, and Albert and his spouse, Princess Helena of Waldeck and Permont. As the only sibling to her younger brother, Prince Charles Edward, who would later become Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, Alice held a unique position within her lineage. Within the private sacred chambers of Windsor Castle, the young princess was christened on March the 26th, 1883. In honor of her late paternal aunt, she was named Alice, a poignant tribute to the Grand Duchess of Hesse. In an elaborate ceremony filled with tradition and diplomacy, representatives stood in proxy for those who couldn't attend, including Alice's paternal aunt, Princess Beatrice, and the Dutch ambassador, Count Charles van Bylandt. In 1898, the Royal Memorial Church of St. George in Cannes was the backdrop for Princess Alice's confirmation. It included the presence of Queen Victoria, who graced this event of such magnitude, yet destiny had dealt a complex hand to Princess Alice. An unseen inheritance passed down through her bloodline was the gene for haemophilia. This disorder had originated from Queen Victoria herself. Alice inherited this gene from her father, Prince Leopold, who tragically succumbed to the disease when Alice was just one year old, leaving behind a profound legacy for his daughter to bear. In the hallowed confines of St George's Chapel at Windsor, a remarkable union was forged on February the 10th, 1904. The air was thick with anticipation as Princess Alice of Albany stood ready to pledge her life to her second cousin, Prince Alexander of Teck, once removed. The family bonds ran deep, for Alexander was the brother-in-law to the Prince of Wales, the future George V. Their bond gave birth to three offspring, the conscientious Princess May of Teck, who would later adopt the title of Lady May Cambridge, the unfortunate Prince Rupert of Teck, whose existence was prematurely extinguished in a devastating car crash, and the cherubic Prince Maurice Franz George of Teck, who, akin to a dazzling flame, departed from this world when he was just five months old. Amidst the ravages of the First World War, Prince Alexander was bestowed with the title Earl of Athlone in 1917, a noble title that shone brightly amidst the darkness of the war. Once the Earl had returned from his military obligations, the couple settled into Clock House within Kensington Palace, a residence of grace and favour previously occupied by Alice's mother. Among her many honours, Princess Alice was chosen as the first godmother to Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands her first cousin once removed through her mother's lineage. So through years of love, loss and tradition, Princess Alice wove her intricate story into the grand tapestry of her family's history. In 1924, Lord Athlone's and Princess Alice's lives opened a new chapter as the Earl took on the mantle of Governor-General of the Union of South Africa. The Princess in her role as Vice Reign was at his side, 
bringing elegance and grace to the governance of the land. Their commitment to their duty saw them establish a coastal beach house at Meisenberg. This monument stands today as a silent witness to the passage of time. The suburb of Athlone, an echo of their impact, was named in their honour. In 1940, Canada was gripped in the throes of war and was bereft of a Governor-General. With his experience and royal connections, Lord Athlone seemed the ideal candidate to fill the void. As Queen Mary's brother and a former Governor-General, his role was approved and he was appointed. Princess Alice joined him and their grandchildren lived with them throughout the war-torn years in the safety of Rideau Hall in Ottawa. As Governor-General, the Earl remained open to more than ceremonial aspects of his role. He supported the war effort, engaged with troops and connected the Canadian people with their monarch, King George. Princess Alice too contributed significantly, fulfilling esteemed positions within the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service and the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division, to name just a few. Winston Churchill also found solace at Rideau Hall, conducting cabinet meetings from his bed. The Earl and Princess played host to the free world's leaders, as Churchill, Roosevelt and Mackenzie King discussed Allied tactics that would eventually result in the victory over Nazi Germany and Japan. The war's end saw Canada emerge from the shadows, eager to play a vital role in rebuilding and reconciliation. During their tenure, the Earl and Princess participated in and supported various social and charitable events, leaving a legacy that resonated long after they left. During her vibrant life, Princess Alice graced numerous events and carried the mantle of many a royal duty. Not confined merely to the role as Vice Reign of South Africa and later Canada, she was present at the coronation of four British monarchs, Edward VII, George V, George VI and Elizabeth II, bearing witness to the royal lineage unfolding. Her prominence in global royal affairs was further cemented when she graced the investiture of Queen Juliana of the Netherlands, yet another notable highlight in her storied life. But her roles were not confined merely to ceremonials. The princess shouldered military affiliations as Colonel-in-Chief of two British army units and one Rhodesian army unit. During the chaos and uncertainty brought on by the Second World War, she took on the mantle of Honorary Air Commandant for the Women's Division of the Royal Canadian Air Force. But her public roles took an academic turn in 1950, as she became the first university of the West Indies Chancellor. She marked her visits with an annual vacation as a guest of Sir Kenneth Blackburn, the then Governor General of Jamaica, and his wife. From the 1930s through to the 1960s, Princess Alice held the reins of the Council of Royal Holloway College, University of London. She, alongside her husband, daughter and son-in-law, proudly represented the King at the 1937 royal wedding of Juliana of the Netherlands to Prince Bernard, and her footprints marked territories beyond the familiar as the Princess and her husband visited Bahrain and Saudi Arabia in the winter of 1938. She carved a unique place in royal diplomatic history as the pioneering British royal to set foot in Saudi Arabia, and also the first royal to have an audience with King Abdulaziz. As the final echoes of the Second World War faded, Alice's brother Charles Edward, Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, found himself trapped by the iron grip of justice. Unwavering in his support for the Nazi cause, he held a position in the Reichstag, serving from 1937 to 1945. The American military government in Bavaria, led by the formidable General George S. Patton, apprehended and imprisoned him for his wartime affiliations. Upon hearing about her brother's unfortunate plight, Alice journeyed to Germany alongside her husband in a passionate plea. They sought to convince the American captors to release him. But their appeal fell on deaf ears, and in 1946, a denazification court handed down its sentence. Charles Edward was heavily fined and brought to the brink of bankruptcy. The 
curtain fell on the life of the Earl of Athlone in 1957 within the hallowed halls of Kensington Palace in London. Princess Alice continued to reside there until the very end, but on a quiet winter's day, January the 3rd, 1981, she slipped away peacefully in her sleep. She was 97 years and 313 days old, just shy of her 98th birthday. Alice's longevity marked her as the oldest lived British princess of royal blood. Her farewell was as grand as her life had been. All royal family members gathered at her funeral in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Her final resting place is in the Royal Burial Ground Frogmore, where she lies next to her husband and son, binding them forever in the tranquil silence of eternity. Princess Alice, the Countess of Athlone, left a remarkable legacy as a royal figure who witnessed and contributed to a significant period of history. Her life spanned from the reign of Queen Victoria to that of Queen Elizabeth II, covering a period of sweeping change worldwide. Her long-standing involvement in the British monarchy provided a distinct vantage point for transforming royal responsibilities over the 20th century. Her contributions in South Africa and Canada as vice reign made her a significant representative of the British monarchy in these nations. In South Africa, her influence is memorialised in places like Athlone, a suburb named after her husband when he was Governor-General. She made significant contributions to the war effort during World War II in Canada and left a lasting imprint on Canadian society. Furthermore, Princess Alice pioneered royal relations with the Middle East, paving the way for future diplomatic meetings. She supported numerous social and charitable causes in her capacities, reflecting the royal family's commitment to public service. Her unwavering dedication to education was manifested in her pioneering roles. And finally, her legacy is one of resilience and longevity. She was the last grandchild of Queen Victoria to pass away and was the longest lived British princess of royal blood. Her life, which spanned almost an entire century, bore witness to the significant transformation of the world and the British monarchy. In conclusion, Princess Alice, the Countess of Athlone, left an enduring memory as a representative of the British monarchy, a diplomatic pioneer, a committed supporter of education, and of course, a resilient role figure. <laughs>